I've started crafting an email, uh, Tyler and I, and uh, um, about to pan that out. Has there, like, have you contacted Zapier before, like, um, to get a free account access? Yeah, we contacted them 12 days ago. Um, okay. They're they're on our sort of sponsor uh, sponsor partner Trello board. So we contacted them 12 days ago and got a non-committal response. I just sent them a little brief nudge saying like, thank you for looking at it. You know, if you can do the expedited, that would be great and here's why. So I'm hoping we'll hear back from them again soon. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a lot of things we've going around are centering around Zapier. So like yeah. with, with Zapier gone, we're almost like strangling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I so honestly didn't realize how much it was doing. I didn't realize it was doing all the automated emails, and I didn't. I there's mm. there's a good chunk of automation that I know in theory exists, but yeah. I've not been put in part of making any of it. So I just like I don't even know what goes as an outbound email yet because I never even got one because I literally signed up to Slack. Yeah, manually. before. The, yeah, yeah, same thing. I, <laughs> I signed up to Slack by signing up through Slack and I signed yeah. up to the Trellos yeah. by signing up to Trellos. Yeah. I didn't do any of this uh -huh. sort of website onboarding stuff. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I remember like, like when, first when, I had to, so when I had to, yeah, when I had to sign in, I actually like, we had to like put our names and like our time commitments on like big Google Sheets. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day. Um, yeah, mine's somewhere the, on there. So, yeah, on, on that piece with the, the Zapier piece, we have to figure out, as, as today highlighted, um, maybe a couple of different people who can be checking on that team account um, for, for different pieces. Because um, I've, I've mainly been going on there and looking at the, you know, if there's anything specific for an event we're doing or any of the people who are trying to contact for sponsorships and such. But there's... Uh, you know, there have been those warnings that have been there for the Zapier stuff. Um, and we just need to make sure that, that anything like that is also. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time because even though I don't do a lot of automation, my, uh, my Gmail is automated to fuck. Okay. I have got oh, wow. about 200 filters, auto filters on mine and hunt and like 40 labeling systems. So I'm pretty used to like filtering and tidying and, and I've got a couple of email accounts that work differently. Like, like, you know, you get your spammy ones for signing up to stuff and then the ones for like yeah. work related things. Mm -hmm. So my spammy one is like, there's loads of music and gaming and, and like there's academic stuff and there's, there's, there's all sorts of, all sorts of different labeling systems. So I'll try and work out if I can um, build some labels and some groups and some structures and some auto filters. And again, whenever we start having a new dialogue with a company, building yeah. in a, you know, an auto filter for whenever we get something from them because it don't get washed away in the noise then. And then you can go, oh, actually there's three emails or two emails regarding Zapier or regarding Amazon or regarding, F, you know, X, Y, Z. Especially what we we'll probably want to do is look at the, look at the alerts we got from Zapier that were saying like warning, there's a problem. And if we do a Gmail filter for those words and make sure that that gets forwarded to Arthur so that he knows right away if something's going haywire with the, with the, I'll, yeah, I'll add, it, mm -hmm. I'll add it to forward it onto me as well because I check my email every day. So brilliant, yeah. that's good. Just to, it'll kick up. I'll notice it then. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm basically combining. I have like six or seven different emails, and I'm using a combined inbox right now just to sort everything out. So I mean, like I could add the team Corona Y account as like another email in that, and then um, check that because um, it's definitely hard to check emails if you're checking in different platforms. So. Yeah. yeah, I think the key trick that we'll have to do is make sure that we have, that we sort of know who's who's on point for different kind of things as they come in. So, uh, you know, if say a sponsor email comes in, we don't have four of us all jumping on that and each of us writing mm -hmm. a response back. Yeah. Um, it's part of because I'm not going to be like, I'm, I'm not the external communications person, so I wouldn't right, know right. what to do with that, yeah. <laughs> Um, but what we can do is as we get those defined, we can then throw those onto, onto the Trello board for communications under ongoing tasks um, and just define like, you know, here's something that's in someone's court, here's something that's in someone else's court, and, and that'll be good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we have the, that initial org chart up. We're going to be trying to make um, a, a circle packing version of it because I think that's going to be a more useful thing for our internal usage. because care less about who's who's where in a hierarchy and more about like I want to talk to somebody or other about data viz who do I go see talk to you know, go talk to about that and what are all of the different teams that are around those are those are internally what we care more about 
Um, I think that the, the org chart that we now do have is probably a useful one to have, um, again, for that external piece. Um, yeah, the, the other piece, we do have an increasing high kind of caliber of partnerships that we're beginning to look at. Uh, Christine is, is, it looks like, uh, possibly getting us in touch with the, the principal analyst at uh, a, a certain county's uh, chief information office. Uh, and they're interested in whether we can help them in kind of going through a mountain of information that they have, a mountain of data that they have, and turning that into something functional. So yeah. we're, we're probably going to start trying to figure out how do we pull little teams together and assess, and, and also what are some default bits of, of text that we can send folks like that so that they understand who we are, what we can do, what we can't do, and what are the things that, that we're looking for from from Municipal, municipal and regional and, and, and federal government uh, as far as information. Yeah, I know we have a lot of bits of general kind of information about who we are at uh, Corona Y. Actually, when I was drafting an email for uh, Zapier, I was looking through some of the templates that we have on the communications. We have like a lot of little snippets about like, you know, we at Corona Y are, have expanded to like 500 plus in less than two weeks and things like that. So if we kind of aggregate that into like one doc, I know, yeah. uh, Daniel, I did see a doc that you had for like a general kind of sponsorship uh, kind of document that you kind of started. Um, mm -hmm. That would be that would be definitely helpful to kind of populate that, get a template going. For sure. Now, and th so the one that is most up to date and will probably keep up to date um, is the Song PR one, where they have mm -hmm. a whole different questions um, and sort of everything that they need to know to know how to position us in terms of press stuff. And so it has a lot of good stuff for us to to pinch mm -hmm. for different pieces of, of yeah, good good an good answers for different different places. I'll have yeah. to go through that and tag them up and yeah, find that wherever that one is. Yeah, I, th I think one of the tasks that we do have to do is to go through our project assets spreadsheet and just uh, part of it is for me. I know there's some new spreadsheets that have been getting made for where different documents located and such, and I just want to make sure that we have some centralized place that's described in the orientation manual so people know how to find it when they get in, um, but also so that all of us know where to go to find the master list of any documentation that we have. Because I think, I think the, the asset list one is a little bit out of date, but is, is there the closest thing that, that had a bunch of that? Yeah, and I had another center repository going, but right now um, with Zapier problem and all, that is <laughs> kind of discontinued until we have unlimited tasks going. So pause, right. yeah. 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 That makes sense. Um, I mean, to a certain extent, I think we just need to have a, like, we just need to educate teams into tagging things in their channels. Like if it's important and needs to be kept for a while, like we need to have a little bit of education around if you, you know, if you yeah. share the thing, okay, pin it to your group, or if it's something that's going to be your group specific, put it into your notes for your channel. Cause that way the, the, the groups can find what they need and we don't need that in a central repository because it's not relevant to everyone. It's relevant to an individual group. Yes. Maybe in, in the long run, we can work out to keep that in one place, but for the time being, groups knowing where they can find what they need to find regularly or they need as a yeah. central a central mm -hmm. reference point it just we just need to have a little bit of, we need to train a little discipline to everyone but it's hard to train discipline because it's boring and it's time consuming yeah. it's, eh, mm -hmm. it's uninteresting sure. it's not it's not fun and interesting coding or like mental challenges around <laughs> like who can i do this it's like oh i have to just write shit down i don't want to do that and I think that's <laughs> that's one of the places where I think we need to um, figure out how to better engage all the different people who are here. And I think there's some people who like that they love that just doing like data entry, grabbing the pieces, putting it all together, consolidating it, and like here's the beautiful kind of curated piece. And so figuring out who are those people and how do we make sure that they're kind of working through on these tasks. I'm just going to quickly show you some updates here to the teams and coordinator stock because mm -hmm. this is ones that is now getting, this is the one that gets pulled to create the org charts. And I'm going to be trying to, now that we have that working, trying to sort of extend the automation that we have out from there. So the, the first thing is that I'm beginning to change it from just being a list of, co of what had been coordinators to listing all of the different people who are assigned on a team uh, and their role. And, and again, we have people who are free floating and we want to make sure people know that that's always good. We're not trying to stop people from free floating, 
but then what we're trying to do here is have it so that we know, you know, who's who's the team lead for any given team, um, and then who are the people that that person identifies as being kind of their their core team who are regularly working on things, and then mm -hmm. for the the terminology, we're just going with with that piece of, of you know team lead for the person who's leading that coordinator for the people who are helping with the logistics side, and then I'm just checking with each person individually to say like look what do you want to be called what what's the title that best fits what you're doing within that team. Once we have, I'm hoping that we can start. I can write some code to compare this spreadsheet to the other spreadsheets we have, like the master roster of everybody, so that we can start to see okay who. Uh, who isn't engaged right now in some kind of a thing, um, and we need to figure out how to get the tagging that uh, that has been uh, that Andrea and a few people have been working on putting together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean because because yeah. if you, yeah. because if you give someone an identity, they'll more likely be a lot more effective than if they're just kind of like roaming around, not not knowing exactly oh, what to yeah. do. Yeah, they'll yeah. they'll feel they'll feel like they can go or they can even if they turn up to another team. I was like, well, I'm I'm one of the data scientists for. X team, but if you need some help with this problem, I'm, I'm, I'm a data scientist with this speciality, and I can I can bend my skill sets to what you need for the time being because yeah. I'm not as busy in that team, or you know, I, I just need a task to do. I'm not bothered which team I'm sitting in as long as I'm solving a task. That's yeah. Fine. Also, for here I'm right starting, now. Go. I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tyler. No, I'm just I'm I was just saying that like sometimes teams have been requesting things, and I'm trying to get implement sort of asking good questions rather than going well i need a thing and i'm like yeah you need to be more than right. i need a thing <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, yeah, what yeah. thing do you need <laughs> i need a person who describes themselves as an nlp data scientist i'm like yeah that's like a really broad brush to right, give right. me that's working with. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's like a lot of people with a lot of i'm like do you, that's why i've been asking like what language are you using what pack packages are you using what level of experience do you need for this and we need to yeah. get people into a bit more of a discipline around like you know, tell me what you actually need, because then I can find you maybe five people who describe who describe themselves as that, but don't just go, well, I need a person. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I can get you a hundred, but you're going to not want to deal with that. <laughs> something that's probably going to straddle between uh, communications and coordination is, especially as we start to have that call for proposals um, channel, lots of neat ideas are coming up in there. We may have to start helping people pull those ideas out, put them into the proposal sheet that we now have uh, for those. And similarly, for I, I think that having some kind of a, whether it's a spreadsheet like the old needs needs one or something, having some place where we can all look, or at least the coordinators can look to understand what are the defined needs that are already there. Anything that somebody can in five minutes find is fine. But uh, is it, when we come to proposals, are we talking Incremental task size proposals or whole new project arms. Yeah, like because I'm, new, I'm seeing I'm seeing a things. lot of yeah I'm seeing a lot of proposals that actually have their own Slack channels right now. Like for example, I know somebody like for doing, whole new project um, arms for anything. It's just like little well, incremental stuff. Oh, and you're breaking up a bit, right? Oh, now. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I think my internet. Yeah, my, my internet is for whole new project arms, I think we have a Trello for that reason. That's what Skunk Works is. Experimental new whole new project arms or whole new concepts. It's like, has anyone thought of making a you know a mobile phone app that does this or something that's like completely not what we're doing currently? Yeah. I think that's what um, that's what Skunk Works is for. And we need to try and maybe in the pro in the proposals because obviously it's good for like chit chat. But you know, if we need to get to people like, okay, if you've got you know, if you've got um, a brainstorm proposal with something resembling a concept, mm -hmm. you know, like but, a yeah. more concrete concept, it's like okay, you've got to the stage where you've got a concept. Throw it up on Skunkworks, see if you can if there is a place for a team to build this thing. Can you bring interest in? Is there other people? And if there is. If you've got like a starting team, what will you need to make yeah. it a functional team? Mm -hmm. You know, it needs to, what, what will you need to make it a functional team? And do we have them available to be able to fill that as a new functional role and a new mm -hmm. team? Yeah. So yeah, but here's my, one thing, and correct me if I'm wrong in this, but I don't know, I don't think a lot of people know exactly that the Skunk Works thing exists or like um, what, what exactly the purpose of that is. Because actually like, I haven't really heard much about like our Skunk Force Trello board or have 
really looked at it much at all. So um, I don't I don't know if people are aware of it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's we, we've we try to flail in a couple of different directions in terms of figuring out how to tease ideas out of people in a way that we can can use them and some kind of coherent document that that just guides people through it and simply says like so you have an idea go to this slack channel discuss it if it, if it gets any traction throw it onto the trello board if it gets to x point now we turn to an actual proposal and we figure out if that's something that we're going to dedicate any resources to um because right yeah. now it's just confusion it's hard for anybody to know what it, what it, it does need a it needs a filtering process because um because it because of the result resource needs it's going to need people it's going to need effort and even like organizing all the ideas are going to need effort so yeah. it's going to need a process where it's going to go through a you know a, a stronger or stronger filter you know because all it takes is someone I, I could put fucking 50 ideas in there and do absolutely nothing with it you know, I could go, well, what about right. this and what about that? And it's like, I'm already seeing that in this this EU versus the virus thing. There's loads of people putting like loads of ideas. Oh, well, we started this project. So there's hundreds and hundreds of people with hundreds of ideas. It's like creating an idea is not hard. Not hard. It's doing mm -hmm. something yeah. and making a thing is hard. And we don't want yeah. a million people turning up with ideas. We want, we want most people who want to turn up and make a thing. <laughs> you yeah, know, right. do a thing. So it's just, yeah. yeah. I mean, like from from going to from an idea to a product, there is obviously like a software uh, engineering model that you know, like seven or eight steps, like gathering data, um, analyzing implementation, and all, all all that thing. And I don't know if we have re really like an established win that's uh, on whatever skunk boards um, to actually like see which step of the pipeline all of those ideas are or if they are really just ideas with no real like you know specification or whatever to it because if the ideas don't really have like much of an explanation or like a starting kind of backbone then people will not be willing to take take on that idea as much yeah because nobody That's somebody right. needs to sit down and do some research Somebody needs to look at, is anyone else answering this question? Is this a question that's valid? Is it, is it useful? Is it going to be helpful? What's it going to do? How practical is it to make? How much work is it going to be? To, you know, like these are like, can, like basically for lack of a better word, like market research questions. Mm -hmm. There's an element of like, and, I'm, and I don't use market in a sense of like making money. I'm just saying like, yeah. is there a marketplace for this idea? Mm -hmm. And if there is a marketplace for this idea, has someone else already tried answering it? And if someone else has already tried answering it, how can you make a better version of it? Or can you use that? Is that good enough? It's like, these are the questions. So it's like, like I said, I can spit 50 ideas out all day long, but what you really need, we need someone, people, people who are willing to put some legwork in. Right. Absolutely. I wonder, would, would you be willing to, um, to, to help us maybe look at that board and figure out how we can better shape it? So like, as you say, there's, there's that development. Mm -hmm so that we have a, a sense of where things are at in it and to help people understand how they can step their own projects through that or their own proposals or ideas for that i mean yeah didn't you have um didn't you have like didn't you post something recently about like the um defra's news new if someone's coming up with a concept these are the questions they need to ask, answer before yeah. anything's of, the, yeah mm -hmm. that's that right. basically so, should be our process <laughs> yeah and so, actually um i started uh i started something at uh task risk um we were when we were pre preparing for phase two you know like we have a bunch of ideas going like three it's almost like a three-prong attack um we have three different goals but we need to pass it through a pipeline so first thing we do we write like you know a, a straight up english document of like you know um what what tyler you were saying like just basically a specification of like how long is it going to take what materials do we need and then we go through a data collection process and things like that so what i've done on trello is kind of created labels for each of those phases uh one for specification one for data collection and that may that makes it a little more organized to see like where everything where your goal is in the scope of idea to product okay so, I think something like, well, we've had it before with like the brainstorm pre, it's like almost a proposal for me should be something that's already got some concrete thought on it. Otherwise it's just a pre-proposal. You're just kind of like spitting out an idea. It's like you haven't looked at anything. So, so just... is, is that on the uh, the risks board that you have that answer on or where, where would I look to sort of see how you have that set up? Um, well, I base, I don't have any like, written documentation of how I created the tags and stuff, but like the general structure of 
um, their uh, uh, task risk, uh, my idea is already on the board. Um, okay. Let me see if I can share my screen and kind of. Well, we, we, we can both look at task risks board. I'm looking at it right now, so. Yeah, yeah. let me, I'm just I'm gonna show like how I'm. Yeah. Yep. Okay, all right. Yep. So, um, so here are three goals. One is like to create a kind of dictionary classification. One is to do some ML and then one is for source control. So kind of, uh, let me just show you the labels we have. So we have labels for, okay, so the first step is specification. Then we formulate a hypothesis about like, you know, uh, how this is gonna work, kind of like a, a, a Google doc, you know, of all the specifications we need. And mm -hmm. then we go to data collection. Right now, right now we're in the intermediate stages. So we have tasks that have labels with data collection on them. And then once we finish those, um, we get to go into like stages of um, implementation and mm -hmm. design, like seeing how our product is actually going to fit in before so, we do any like the um, code. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, that's that's the that's the product design process. The only the only step that you're missing is market research. I yeah, think that's what the I think that's what that's the specification the is. I, it's no, because specification requires an idea that's already got a fixed idea. You, you, a specification rise to make a specification you've already come up with a concrete idea mm -hmm. um market research is looking for ideas or finding if that idea is useful that even just as a concept before you know anything that's specific about how to solve that or how to make it so there is almost a market research stage that has been part of the reason yeah. why you're not having that stage is because you've already been talking through it and it, and you've mm -hmm. kind of already got a fixed set of goals but if someone's think, coming up with a new arm, there's market research. It's just one of the things. Go ahead, Yeah. Go on, Daniel. I was just going to say that, uh, that sorry, the, the bandwidth is, is making it a bit jaggy. Um, talking with Maya earlier today, and one of the key things I think is just looking at, um, we're doing essentially it's appreciative inquiry, which is we look at each team, see what's working effectively, and then figure like, okay, what, what do we beg, borrow, and steal from that? And so my hunch is, that what would typically be within that market research stage, as you say, um, is already like, that's happening in Slack, that's happening in chats. There's there's different ways that, that part is kind of being covered. Um, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I trust the, tag, the tagging system here seems to be working well. Um, also on that piece of like tagging and noting, I'm gonna switch track for a sec, but um, how we label different bits. The three of us are the people who have been most focused on the badge piece as well. And so I want to quickly talk about that because I'd really like to start rolling those out. I think those are going to be something that can be helpful. Um, I think we've got a good set of the initial ones of simply like, what, what's the team? Were you part of the round one uh, rollout of things? Um, but I think the next set are going to be probably related to skill sets. And my hunch is for those ones that it probably, even if we just do some like simple color coding thing where people subjectively decide for themselves, like I'm a total newbie, but I'd love to learn about this thing. I have some training in this thing. I, I have some experience in this thing or like I'm a veteran at doing whatever this piece yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, veteran and then, and then, and then back, lack of a better word, yeah. uh, um, uh, an expert in that field. Yeah, yeah. yeah can, what, can you like, um, like have a badge in Slack? I don't know exactly how that works. I'm still not sure how whether how we would do Badger and Slack integration. I think it's probably um, we can we can do it, but it'd have to be basically you no. Know, like I've got the little British flag right now. They'd be yeah. basically emojis, uh, and we'd have to drop a set of them. We'd have to. I'd have to basically take the make the badges and then make small badges with it that would be emojis, and then people would be able to use emojis in their statuses or in their profiles, and then be like. That could that could work that way, but um, okay. it's not going to be easy. And maybe there is add-ons that can add a visual element to to speed it up. I don't know. Yeah, so I'll 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 look into whether there's maybe an actual integration for Badger or something that we can do uh, to to kludge something together to make it a little easier. One of the things that's nice with Badger is that it also isn't just limited into the Slack then, but there's a whole system that's designed to use these as credentials. Because my hunch is, um, as Corona Y stuff continues on. Not only will these be useful things for us internally to be able to look at and say, like, oh, okay, here's somebody who has great, you know, Power BI experience. It'll become a thing that actually is a credential. It's something where someone can be like, yeah, I spent I spent four months at Corona Y. Here's here's the things that Corona Y assessed 
uh, or or at least accepted that uh, that that I was was doing and was as good at doing, uh, and, and and that may become something that's useful down the road for people. But but even just for now, for us to be able to see it and for people to to see to to be seen and acknowledged for the pieces that they're bringing to the table, I think is going to be a useful thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I know on a smaller scale that I think um, I think it's Task Geo or something. Um, uh, they've integrated basically like a um, a team uh, column uh, where they basically have a list of all the team members and like you know their skills get uh, skill set and stuff. I haven't actually looked very much into it, but it it, lo it looks like a possibility on a smaller scale. Um, it, it it definitely won't be like um, for everyone at Corona Wide, but it's it's a start. For sure. Well, and actually, let me grab, I'll just do another quick screen share. One of the ones that we have. So for our board. Yeah, I, Team Geo have got, um, no, they've even got a now hiring tag at the top. Yeah, which is brilliant. <laughs> so we've got our communications member sheet. And, but I like the idea of having it just right on the Trello. And so for this one, we have a list of different people, what the skill sets are. Um, Tyler, are you on here yet? Yeah, yeah, there you are. Um, I don't and, know. I think I might have stuck myself <laughs> on the bottom. There you are. Um, but, but this also is handy for us to be able to go through and say like, okay, so who was it who knows how to do something in Maya or who knows how to you know, put something through in GIMP and, and build up an image? And so yeah, it's one of the reasons why I put all software, basically all creative software I own is a case of these are the things I could do with my computer right now. Right, yeah. So anyways, I think, if, um, I know Arthur was keen to have some of the descriptions for the badges be, you know, be more kind of fun. I've, I've, we've, we've had a conversation, so I've, I've sort of talked to him about the, the non-purely fun functionality of badges as well. But I think I liked the idea, Tyler, you were going in some really cool directions in terms of the ideas for badge design. And I wonder if we want to just, if we can mock something up for a couple of them. Uh, um, do, you to, do you want to see what I've got so far? I've been yeah. Kind of... That'd be great. Um, I've got basically one big document full of stolen stolen ideas that I'm stitching together. Brilliant. I'll just open it up and show you what I've got. Because I've been basically cropping shapes and then trying to come up with like versions of. I am I haven't played around with it in a couple of days, but let me just see. Share your screen. Designer. Oh, my screen's gone all bright. Um, so I've got some uh, piles of shapes of various things I was just playing around with. Um, so I've got like little shield symbols. I kind of like them. I was going to do this one as kind of a comms type thing. Mm -hmm. Communication towers, external sound things. Um, I was playing around with some shapes, trying to come up with like, when you're talking about like a, a, a big symbol with a small symbol at the bottom. Right. Um, I was thinking something along that's very much like a medic. Um, mm -hmm. So people with medical experience or of a certain standard, we could have different versions of that for that reason. I was playing around with stuff in stuff, colors. I was also liking the ideas that um, if I think I, nobody's on board of it yet, but I kind of want to assign every team a color. And that way, at a glance, you'll be able to see what team they are just by color. And then symbols mm -hmm. inside it would give us rank for lack of a better word, or mm -hmm. skill set. This is the this is one of the the data scientists or the or the geoviz people or the whatever right. skill set. So I was playing around with that, um, and then yeah, some of these were actually a lot fussier than I expected. I played a, that one. <laughs> that took some work. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, is it? I stitched things. I basically like yeah. I've got I stole an idea from somewhere else, and then just yeah, I liked I liked this. So I'd, mm -hmm. say, I'd try to see if I could make something like that as a vector. And, yeah. and that's kind of the idea I was playing around with as comms. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I really like this direction. Yeah, and I don't know what that one, but I kind of like that idea as a um, coordinator because it's an eye and right, right. They're, watch <laughs> they're watching lots of different things because I feel like I'm always fucking watching everybody else's work even though I'm not doing anything most of the time. Um, that's, so that's what I was playing around with. They, they, obviously the idea is I'm going to build vectors so they'll be scalable. That's the idea. Um, I was playing around with this. It started out as a cog and turned it into a flower. And I don't know why I like say some of the fun ideas like chat boxes or you know wrong you know regular communicators. Uh, so you could get yeah, for if you for talking a certain amount in a chat 
Um, this one could be like, I was thinking of like uh, uh, an, somebody who's good for generating ideas or good for sparking off ideas or even, you know, for Arta as the like person who lights the flare. I don't know. I was yeah. playing around with some stuff. Uh, these things can be changed to different, like, mm -hmm. that one's edited down. But like these things can be as many teeth or as little teeth as I want. So I can change that around and like that. And you can, I can edit them together. I was, I was playing around with colors. I ain't really going to colors yet because I, I actually built this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is actually all individual pieces that I built and edited. Is is it the possible is, to is it possible to make a party parrot badge? Um, probably I could probably steal <laughs> one. I um, mean, let's let's be fair. Nothing I've ever I've created. I've just stolen everybody else's ideas and then created my own versions of it. Yeah, that's what it's all about. So if, if we make those vector versions, if we then make some reasonably high uh, resolution. Um, raster images or whatever that would be, the, the non-vector. Mm -hmm. I can I can probably weave something in PHP even that'll be able to look through the tags that people have and take like a team tag and the skill tag that we're flagging for them and simply put those together. If we have something like this comms one that you have there and simply say, okay, the ones that are from this column go in the big place, the ones in the little one go into the Pentagon um, and we can build something. Yeah. Easy to I mean, put you can together, even even. I mean, I was I, I was um. Did somebody say they had like a premium account for the the? Yeah. If mm -hmm. if basically I was, I mean, I could download them, but I if we have to officially like put names on shit, and if we can officially call it that we don't need to because somebody's paid their premium, I was That's just right. going to go in and steal the shit out of like loads and loads and loads of them, and then yeah. like edit, mm -hmm. steal, vectorize, go right. you know trace some of them, edit, change, tweak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even merged because i really liked um i was looking on it and like i seen what you've put on badger but i saw some ones for like i were looking for like links i think mm -hmm. have i closed this tab down now uh i don't know if you can see they'll see that oh no it's because i've closed screen down um i was looking at can, like the word linking and connectors and they've got some really cool simple images that are like you know bubbles and lines between them and again just i was thinking that as maybe a coordinator badge or uh -huh. team team leader badge yeah mm -hmm. definitely consider we, the ones that i have there as being the seed that is meant to make yeah. it like oh that's awful let me do something better so yeah yeah it's my, yeah. i like some of the concepts Good. but i was looking at like yeah, basically using them as as, as pr proof of concepts and maybe some play place yeah. placeholders. Yeah, and you exactly. can use add-ons to the badges that you have. Like for example, I know um, some badges they put like stars. They like append stars to the bottom of the badge to show maybe like a higher experience level level. I mean, right. yeah, you could it. we could even use um, military insignia in that way. Like you know, two lines, oh, one yeah, line, two yeah, line, yeah. three line. One line, two line, three line, and then a star for an expert or something like a general. Because, yeah, one line is like a private, two lines is like a sergeant, three lines is like a captain, and, a f and four lines is a lieutenant or general or something like that. And then, yeah, you've got mm -hmm. and then stars for ex exceptionally experienced. So. One, of, one of the things that I know we need to, we, we seem to have lost a lot of our graphic design folks. And so once we have some people like kind of uh, Kim and other people coming back in, uh, I, I think we can we can take those pieces and then come up with like what can we give it that gives it the kind of that distinctive Corona Y flavor so there's like the cohesiveness to them all and, mm -hmm. and we, the pieces that we're putting together um, and make it so that as soon as anyone looks at it they're like oh yeah that's that's a Corona Y badge kind of thing. Yeah it's one thing that I've but part of the reason why I'm not um, giving any of these a real flavor yet is because I know I'm not the only person who's going to be involved and two we still don't really have a Corona Y flavor Nobody's putting like a, a branding flavor on right. anything yet. And there's definitely things that I'm like, I'm not good enough at animation. Well, I, I can do animation, but it just be take me so, so so long. But there's little things I'm like, yeah, there's, I want to do it all. And I didn't know I can't. So I just have to work out how to set some parameters. I mean, I'm going to look at some design system stuff because I like, I'd like to play around with that. But, that, yeah. but that's, that's more like a web design modules and for React. For sure. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll, we'll we'll let's continue in in, in Slack and uh, and on the Trello board with some of this piece. I I should head out. 
Um, but it feels like we've got some good some good ideas. If you two want to jump jump on, you both have access to the to the Badger account. So feel free to to play around with some of the other badges we may want to put in, etc. The main thing that Anton pointed out that I definitely agree with is that we want to make sure that none of them is ever like a popularity contest thing. Each one should be really clear and concise of like, I did this thing, or I have this skill, or I participated in a something or other, um, rather than think. Yeah, I definitely yeah. don't want uh, any equivalent of like, persons posted a thousand times in Slack, because it's like, because right. it'd be like, it's pretty sad. That's just, that's yeah. just, no, it's not. It's just a spam. And it's just, just yeah, I, I know, probably, right? I probably, we want to, we want I mean, to incentivize I mean, the right things. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't want to encourage the wrong thing. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so that'll be the thing as, as you guys think about some of the badges we can have is just remember that we're trying to make it so that um, it's clear and easy for anyone to understand what you need to do to get it and that it's something that is something we actually want to incentivize. Yeah, because as we've said before, we don't want to just manipulate with gamification that actually has ends up being destructive or exactly. or abuse mm -hmm. or abusive to people's attention in some ways yeah. like spent 10,000 hours in slack and like that's just a really yeah. weird thing to measure <laughs> right exactly all right so i i should sign out but we'll uh we'll uh talk to you all tomorrow probably and uh look forward to, to working with you then that is man all right awesome.